Take away the world's desires when we pray. Holy Spirit, lift us higher when we pray. When we pray. When we pray. Let it not be for a season when we pray. wisdom and not reason when we pray let your name be our petition when we pray when we pray when we pray 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 Lord show us the way the church. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I come before you, Lord, recognizing that you are supreme in authority. Your power is great in the heavens and the earth, and your anger is shown against all wickedness and the evil imagination of men. Father, I boldly approach your throne yet again, this time asking for grace and mercy for your bride, the church. Your word says that judgment shall begin at the house of God, so let the church bear the greatest indictment. 
because your invisible works are clearly seen, demonstrating your eternal power and divine nature. All men are without excuse. Yet through hypocrisy, we have given place to your enemies to blaspheme your great and holy name. Because of our perversion and deceitfulness, which brings shame to your name, they question whether we are really your children. For this cause, Lord, we are guilty and bear the greater burden. We have been weighed in the balance and been found wanting, yet we refuse to change our path. We have been deliberate in our great trespass before you, Lord, and we are not hidden from your sight. We have provoked you to anger with our foolish and unwise behavior, being spiritually blind and naked, allowing the world to see our shame. Heavenly Father, because you are a God of mercy and great compassion, we come before you in humility that you may examine our ways. We come before you confessing that if we humble ourselves and pray, seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, then will you hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that your hands are not shortened that they cannot save, nor your ear heavy that it cannot hear. We stand before you, Lord, to answer the indictment that has been laid against us and pray that through repentance our sins will be forgiven. For we have done wicked things in your sight, even rebellion against your commandments and your continued reminders and warnings. In the name of Jesus, we acknowledge our shortcomings and weaknesses, seeking to be washed in the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. For we were called to be the salt of the earth, a people that would bear witness to your name, follow your examples, live by your commandments, and set a difference between that which is holy and that which is profane. Instead, our hearts have been pierced with the desires of the world, and we have adopted their ways, chasing after materialism and lust and compromising your standards. We have not sought you for who you are, but for what you can give and how much we can get. We have allowed worldliness into your church and created unholy alliances with the world, calling that which is evil good and that which is good evil, while refusing to take a righteous stand. We have sought validation from the world and coveted the admiration of men who have perverted your statutes for selfish gain. We have shown them all that is in your sanctuary, giving access to thieves and robbers who now make merchandise of your sheep and a mockery of your name. We have failed to protect the innocent, neglected the cries of the poor, and watched as families are being destroyed. We have not sanctified you in the eyes of the people, becoming powerless gift chasers who adorn the things on the outside while failing to address the evil within. We have compromised your word by seeking popularity and friendship with the world, choosing to entertain the masses with our talents and gifts while watering down your word and speaking fables instead of convicting people to change. We stand idle as the innocent are snatched from the womb while we defend the guilty giving them place on your stage. We are consumed with the pursuit of wealth, while at the same time we are robbed of morality, dignity, and holiness. Through compromise and exploitation, we have lost our influence. Through sermonettes and motivational speeches, we have catered to itching ears. And through hypocrisy and double standards, our pulpits have been stripped of power and authority. We have even embraced the lifestyles of this world and distorted the meaning of your love instead of preaching the sovereign design and plan of God. We have lost our way, Lord, and given over to the cares of this life. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, forgive us, Father, for we bombard your throne with selfish prayers while the world around us declines and decay, drifting further and further away from you. We have been mesmerized by the lust of the world and desensitized by its influences while engaging in unspeakable acts, adultery and fornication, abortions, drunkenness, promiscuity, hatred and insensitivity, drug use, blasphemies, idolatry, man lying with man, women lying with women. We defile ourselves by flooding our minds with pornography, immorality and lust, and other kinds of sexual perversion. We have neglected our children and not taught them your ways, putting success and riches before love and direction. We have allowed our marriages to grow cold, harbored unforgiveness, and refused to show affection while opening the door for the enemy to wreak havoc in our families. We have become a lukewarm church, lacking holiness and obedience to your word, even denying your name, Lord, and abandoning the cross. We have allowed false prophets to operate in the church while embracing false gods and religions. 
We are in a backslidden state and confess our sins before you. We were all born into this world with something to surrender, but so many of us have refused to let go, choosing to embrace our fallen nature by making excuses for sin, as opposed to trusting your word for deliverance and healing. In doing so, we have denied the power of the cross and the delivering authority of your resurrection. We go down in the water, but never come up, sinking further and further into the depth you gave your life to conquer. We have titles without meaning, performances without actors, services without substance, and buildings that are lifeless when it comes to the real power of God. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, we repent, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness. Lord, let your anger and fury be held back, and let your mercy fall upon us as we repent of our wicked deeds and turn back to you. Let us once again be the people you have chosen to show yourself strong in the earth, that through our examples and trusting your word, the world will once again look to the church for salvation and demonstration of the true power of God. Lord, please hear our cry, incline thine ear, and behold our frail state, that we may eagerly approach your throne with boldness and have confidence at your appearing. Your word says that you will never leave or forsake us, and we come to you by faith, knowing that without faith it is impossible to please you. Deliver us from the guilt of the past, and wipe away all condemnation, for through our sin we have given the enemy access to our lives and the legal right to carry out his diabolical plan of destruction against us. But now, Lord, through repentance, his rights have been revoked. In the name of Jesus, we denounce Satan and his demonic forces of evil and his rebellion against the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus and the finished work of the cross, he loses all rights to torment, deceive, destroy, afflict, and manifest himself in the lives of your people and we sever all ties, cooperation, agreement, conspiracy, and relationship with the world and the world system. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, we command Satan to loose every stronghold, demonic manifestation, false belief, vice, grip, addiction, spell, and curse right now according to the word of God. We choose you, Lord, and the finished work of the cross, and want no part of Satan and the temptations of this world. I declare right now that we are loosed in your precious name. Lord, we renew our covenant and commitment to you and exercise our choice to faithfully serve you with all of our heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. In the name of Jesus, we make a conscious choice to turn back to you and once again follow after your statutes and commandments and pledge our undivided service and devotion to you. But we have been bought with a price and serving you is our reasonable service. So help us, Lord, to be lights in this world, ambassadors of the Most High God, and instruments of righteousness, representing your will and not our own. I pray, Lord, that our hunger and thirst for you is never quenched, and that you give us both to will and to do your good pleasure, that we as a church may fulfill the calling and purpose that you have spoken over our lives. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, we denounce the pleasures of this world, false doctrine, and all forms of spiritual adultery. We pray that you expose the synagogue of Satan operating behind church walls, every lying and deceitful spirit, and demons operating as the angels of light. Let us not worship or reverence anyone or anything but the true and living God, and drive out the spirit of Antichrist. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I pray that you remove all doubts and bring revelation to every distortion of the truth, and that we drive out the spirit of Jezebel that teaches fornication, lust, and idolatry that her curse, seduction, and influence be broken and bound right now in the name of Jesus and erased from the hearts and minds of your people. I ask, Lord, that the depths of Satan operating in the church be exposed and driven out in Jesus' name, that we no longer defile ourselves through the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, hating all evil, pride, arrogance, and the evil way. Grant us spiritual discernment that we are not deceived, let us examine the fruit of a man and not be gift chasers led astray by talents, gifts, and charisma. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I pray that the church will once again be known for its good works, love, faith, dedication, patience, and compassion to all men. That we hate the sin but love the sinner, understanding that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Let us love according to the word of God, standing on the truth preaching the word in and out of season and making no provision for the flesh while understanding that grace is not an excuse for sin and a justification for heaven. 
Help us, Lord, to minister without compromise to those seeking the truth and be found without spot or wrinkle, boldly proclaiming the truth of Christ and the power of his resurrection. Let us live and reign with Christ, clothed with holiness and abiding in his presence through eternity. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I speak life into your church and come against all dead things. Let our branches bring forth fruit in their season and our roots be nourished by the waters of life. Let us be called and set apart, chosen and faithful, serving as kings and priests in your kingdom, knowing that we are in the end times, that we be not lulled to sleep by the passing of days, nor deceived by scoffers who deny your coming, but that we are watchful and that day does not overtake us as a thief in the night. We are pilgrims in the earth and this is not our home. So we look forward to the rapture and second coming of Christ, having faith that the promises of God shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we hold fast to our belief that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man come up to the Father but by you, and that we never lose our boldness and passion for the Most High God. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I pray that we are not weary in well-doing, and that we have a desire to spend quality time in your word and in fellowship with you that we neglect not the fellowshipping of the saints as we are one in the body of Christ and sealed by the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may all faithfully walk in the calling and purpose we have been given, pressing toward the mark and high calling of Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are able to keep that which we have committed unto you against that day and that nothing we have done is in vain, but all things are accounted to our heavenly account that we may be rich towards God. Lord, let us run this race with patience, looking unto you who has endured the cross and despised the shame for the joy that was set before you, that our names be confessed before the Father and written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray, Lord, that we are steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the love of God, that we may receive a crown of life promised to those who endure unto the end. Now unto God, who knows the beginning from the end, who is our shield in time of trouble and who causes us to endure the fiery furnaces of life. We give you honor and praise. We proclaim and ascribe greatness to your name for your deeds are perfect and all that you do is just and fair. You own the cattle on a thousand hills and cause darkness to flee in the presence of light. I pray, Lord, that we demonstrate our gratitude for all that you have done by keeping your commandments. For your word says obedience is better than sacrifice and rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Let your word be a light unto our path, revelation in darkness, and our blueprint for all matters pertaining to this life and the one thereafter. It is through you, Heavenly Father, and the power of your might that one could chase a thousand and two could put ten thousand to flight. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. These things I ask and pray and affirm in Jesus' great and holy name. Amen. 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 Amen and good evening and welcome to LPJ 64 where Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing Bible End Time Bible Studies. Yes. This is what we're going to be doing. Happy Sabbath to you and thank you for joining us once again. Once again, we're back to celebrate and praise and worship and just glorify the Lord. That's right. And hope that you had a wonderful and blessed week. We did, so we're here again to enjoy some more Bible studies. Yes. So right now, we're going to be doing America and Babylon. Amen. America Amen. and Babylon. America and Babylon. I tell you, it's uh, just a great Sabbath. It is so great to... Uh, be here again to celebrate the Lord together, especially with your brothers and sisters that, that know the Lord like we do and love, love talking about it, not ashamed of it, not ashamed of his name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be starting off with Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time of the end, Michael shall arise the great angelic prince who defends and has charge of you of your people this is daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. all right and there should be a time of trouble straightness and distress 
such as never was since there was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book of life. And that was Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. All right. All right. So, again, we are talking about America and a Babylon. So, we learned the last time we were talking about the false three-in-one God. This God is made up of two powers on earth who join with the dragon, Satan, together. They attack God's people. So, the Bible shows a wild animal coming from the sea. And that was in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 10. Well, this animal is the first of two powers on the earth. This animal is a mix of three other animals, and we've seen that yes. uh, Wednesday in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2 together. So these four animals are word pictures for four kingdoms. Babylon, which is the lion. Media Persia, the bear. Greece is the leopard. And you can find that in Daniel chapter 7, 4 through 6. Let's look at Daniel chapter 7, 4 through 6. Okay. We had read that and studied that the last time we had talked about it. Seven. Daniel chapter 7. Chapter 7, 4 through six. The first, the Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar was like a lion and had eagle wings. I looked till the wings of it were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon two feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, the mere Persian Empire was like a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, or one dominion, and three ribs were in its mouth, between its teeth, and it, it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and behold, another Grecian umpire of Alexander the Great, like a leopard, which had four wings of a bird on its back. The beast had also four heads, Alexander generals, his successors, and dominion was given to it. So we found though in Rome, which is a little horn. That was in Daniel seven, chapter chapter seven, verse seven and eight. Rome started out as a kingdom, and later it became a religious power. What is it today? A religion power. And Rome is, is and Rome is wanting to control this country right here, and it's working on it. Wait until the Pope finishes and pass that Sunday law. You got to realize that the state and religion is getting ready to be brother and sister again. And when exactly. it does, look how all power began again. Rome will step in there again. That's why we're talking about the history of Rome. See, the little horn power grew out of the Roman kingdom. So, like we read in Daniel 7, we learn about things the little horn power did. The wild animal that comes from the sea in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 10, does many of these same things too. So, many Bible experts believe the Roman Catholic Church is, Church is one of the powers that will try to destroy God's people in the last days. But the Roman Church is not alone in its attack on God's people. Revelation warns us that another power will join the Roman Church and the dragon. That's why we call it the threefold trinity. That's the right. False, That's the right. false threefold trinity. That's right. Amen to that. Amen. So, um, we're going to look at, when we read, let's read it again. In Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 10, so those that didn't. 13, 1 through 10. Okay. Revelation chapter 13. 
1 through 10. As I stood on a sandy beach, I saw a beast coming up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. On his horns he had ten royal crowns, diadems, and blasphemous titles on his head. Heads. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but its feet were like those of a bear, and its mouth was like that of a lion. And to him the dragon gave his own might and power, and his own throne and great dominion. And one of his heads seemed to have a deadly wound, but its death stroke was healed. And the whole earth went after the beast in an amazement and admiration. They fell down and paid homage to the dragon because he had bestowed on the beast all his dominion and authority. They also praised and worshipped the beast, exclaiming, Who is a match for the beast, and who can make war against him? And the beast was given the power of speech, uttering boastful and blaspheming words, and he was given freedom to exert his authority and to exercise his will during forty-two months, which is three and a half years. And he opened his mouth to speak slanderous against God, blaspheming his name and his abode, those in abode, those who live in the heavens. He was further permitted to a wage war on God's holy people, the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him to extend his authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. And all the inhabitants of the earth will fall down in adoration and pay him homage. Every one whose name has not been recorded in the book of life of the Lamb and that was slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone is able to hear, let him listen. Whoever leads into captivity will himself go into captivity. If anyone slays with a sword, with a sword must he be slain. Herein is the call of the patience and the faith and fidelity of the saints, which is God's people. So God still has loyal followers in all churches, yes. including the Roman Catholic Church. And so and they all and they all and God's people will hear him. And they will come out. And they will come out. They will come out and they will be accepted people. Because they and, love the Lord. And a lot of them don't even know all what we're talking about. And not what's yet. in God's word. Not right? yet. Not yet. But they will hear God's voice and they will come out. And they will come out. And Rome will be against them. So at the same time the Bible clearly points to the awful things that the Roman Catholic Church did in the past. The Bible also shows us that the ruling power that controls this church will have a big part in, in the things that happen in the last days. So in Revelation 13.3, what we read, what is happening in this verse? In Revelation 13.3, it says, And one of his heads seemed to have a deadly wound, remember? Yes. So for hundreds of years, the Roman Catholic Church was most important religion. In many ways, the Roman Catholic Church also was the government leader for all of the countries in Western Europe. And that wound was healed. And so we're going to talk about that. Okay, I, I don't want to jump too far ahead. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to talk about that. Whoa. I know. Uh, <laughs> it gets excited. It gets good to me. Get excited. And, yeah. That's right. And an example of the uh, Roman Catholic Church's power can be seen in a story about King Henry the Fourth. Henry was the ruler over Germany then. Henry made Pope Gregory the Seventh very mad. So. Henry went to the Pope's castle to say he was sorry and make peace. The Pope made Henry wait outside in the cold winter for three days. Then Henry was allowed to see the Pope. Pope Gregory bragged afterwards that he was his job. It was his job to show kings that they must feel proud. They must not feel proud. Hmm. Uh -huh. After many wars and changes in Europe, Rome's power ended 
in the late 1700s. Now, we talked about this Wednesday. In 1798, the French army made Pope Pius VI a prisoner. And then a year later, the Pope died. Mm -hmm. So in Revelation 13, warns us that the Catholic Church will grow stronger again in the future. And what is it doing? It's growing stronger. And it's this growing, is the yeah. future. So Revelation uses the word picture of a head with a deep cut. The cut should cause a death, cause death, but... The cut is healed to show that the Catholic Church will get its power back. So That's today, right. Rome does not have the same power it did the days of Pope Gregory the Seventh. But the Catholic Church has grown in power again. So one example of the Catholic Church power can be seen when Pope Francis was talking to the American Congress. That was back in 2015. Oh, yeah, that was back in 2015, yes. And it that was, talk was, it never happened before then. No, no. See, prophecy... So it started in 2015. All right, it started. Prophecy started feeling itself. But that was only in the beginning. Yeah. See, the message in the Bible about the future warns us that the Catholic Church power will continue to grow stronger and stronger. So, let's look at, we was talking about, we're in Revelation chapter 13. Let's look at 11 and 12 while oh, we're in there. Okay. Then I saw another beast rising up out of the land itself. He had two horns like a lamb. And he spoke a like, roar like a dragon. Like a dragon. He exerts all the power and right of control of the former beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell upon it to exalt and defy the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and to worship him. Now, so, go re ahead. Remember, these, these beasts are people. And I'm going to describe what these beasts, like you said, okay. we're talking about, like you said, Medo Persian, they gave the name like lions and bears. They give them those names, but they are Countries. kingdoms. They're they're kingdom. Yes. Well, kingdom. Mm -hmm. Kingdom, that's what they are. And who control kingdom? People. That's right. People. It's, a, it's like you said, it'd be a system. Yeah. So a people system. ask, how can the Roman Catholic Church have the same power today or in the future? that Revelation 13 says it will have. Well, first, Revelation shows another wild animal power that comes before the wild animal power that comes from the ground. Many Bible thinkers say that the first wild animal is a word picture for the Catholic Church. Revelation says that the Catholic Church will be given power for 42 months. That was in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 5. The 42 months is the same time as the time, times, and a half of time, mm. which is three and a half years. And that was also in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. The 42 months also is the same time as the three and a half years in Revelation chapter 12, 14. The 42 months also is the same as the 1,260 days in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. Well, these 1260 days means 1260 years. During those 1260 years, the Catholic Church attacked anyone who disagreed with her teachings. Amen. Amen. And the 1260 years started in AD 538 and ended. In 1798, that is 1,260 years. 1,260 years. And if it happened once, it it's, happened it's getting ready to History happen History repeats itself. Repeats itself. So yeah. that was the year the Pope was made a prisoner in the 1700s. At this time, the Roman Church got its death wound. So the Bible message about the Roman Catholic Church did come true. So at this time in history, another power appears, 
what we read in Revelation 13 and 11. Well, this wild animal power comes from the ground. Mm -hmm. So the other powers came out of the water. Water is a word picture for many people. Many people. Water, water is many. people. Many for people. these reasons and other reasons, this new wild animal power is from the earth must be the United States. Because this York. nation became a strong power in a place on this earth where there was no other kingdom. Right. The United States. Mm -hmm. This is where this beast come from. Out of the earth. It came out of the earth. Came out of the earth with it's the United States. So this animal has two horns that look the same as a lamb's horn. As we read in Revelation 13 11. These two horns are a word picture for something gentle, but the lamb will talk like the same as a dragon. This verse tells us about a time when this power will attack God's people in the same way the Catholic Church attacked God's people in the past. Amen. I'm telling you. Now, you think about this, see, it's, this is taking place to happen in, in, in the coming. This is coming. This is getting ready to happen. Now exactly. this Yeah, it's happening now. It's taking place now. It's in, it's taking place right now. You because understand? when you read the history of Rome, it's something. Twelve hundred and sixty yes. years they was in power. That is a long time. And they lost power, but they're getting ready to gain power back. Can you understand? This is what the Sunday law and all these things are coming about. They're getting ready to get their power back, get in control again. And when they do, they're going to do as wrong the Romans did before. Because the answer is the Catholic Church will get their power back is because the, the Catholic Church will have the power of the United States behind it. That is how they're going to yeah, get it back. As, as they do all the other countries. See, this country is the only country just about they do not have behind, it. behind them. Because right now, it, the religious legislation and all that church and state are separate. Yes. That's why separate. we're not bagging them at this point. At this point, right. But keep watching. Pay keep attention. Watching. As the Lord said, watch as well as, as, well as pray. We we do more praying than we do watching. We need to put a little watching in that praying. Exactly. That so means, learning all this stuff really, it makes a difference. It makes you, okay, so let me pay attention. Let me see what I need to do. Let me keep an eye on what they trying to take your mind off oh, of. Uh, they put you in this racism thing that, Blacks against whites and all this other mess. Yeah, that's not important. Yes, because you, you you see, uh, they got your mind wrapped up in everything else. Racism. They don't care about black and white being against each other. That ain't the thing now. They got your mind on all these other things as they bring their laws in mm -hmm. and integrate state and church together again, and put your mind over there in the corner. So they can organize their system against us. But it see, ain't they about. keep you looking it at the wrong thing. Yes. Yes. So uh, we, we need to be watching and paying attention to what's happening. That's All right. right. We, we definitely do because um, many times it's not being spoken of in our churches today. It's so important that we as a people, God's people, do a lot of studying on our own. Because a lot of pastors are not speaking the truth, and maybe they may not know. Well, they may not know, but, uh, you know, let's face it. There are some things you can't speak. We don't get, let me, this, is, this is why we said Rome is building the system. Let me tell you what, if you know the system that's being built, there are some things you don't have a right to speak about. In Rome time, like in those days, there was things you did not speak about, or you would lose your license, you would lose this, you would lose that, you would lose your life. 
right. people are back getting back in wrong days. That is wrong correct. Days. They and done we, a whole lot of killing back then. And if you 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 were getting a system, people were scared to speak because they don't want to lose this or that. If you guys people got to you would lose your life for me, you would gain the kingdom. You can't be scared to speak out. Because they're going to come, and the time is still coming. And if you talk about certain things, you just might do that. That's correct. And and God tells his people that we have to speak the truth. We have to sound the alarm. We have to let our people know. Pay attention. Stop worrying about blacks and whites and <clears throat> the police killing and all that. <clears throat> God will take care of that. They're doing that. To keep your mind off the real thing of what they do. Yeah, these things have to be spoken of. And if you worry about losing your life, then you're not going to never speak the truth. The alarm cannot be sound. That's correct. See, if you're going to sound the alarm, there's got to be a depth of uh, uh, a, a creed behind the alarm. There is no alarm if there's none to be alarmed about. Yeah, that's true. Okay. He just so, wanted his people to be ready. That's right. So if you sign the alarm, you gotta there is a reason to sign the alarm. If there's a alarm, somebody don't want you to sign it. So that means there's yeah, somebody gonna stop you if they can. So there are why some preachers are not preaching them, but they know. They know. They didn't go to school and did not read about this stuff. They they read about it. They just know better than teach it. Okay, let's hear some more of this good stuff. Okay, and we're going to Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, 10, and 11. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9, 10, and 11. Okay. Then another angel, a third, following them, saying with a mighty, vo uh, mighty voice, whoever pays homage to the beast and his statues and permits the beast stamp or inscriptions to be put on his forehead or on his hand. He too should have to drink of the wine of God's indignation and wrath, poured undiluted into the cup of his anger, and he should be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment of sin forever and ever, and they have not respite day or night, these who pay homage to the beast, and to his image, and whoever receives a stamp of his name upon him. See, the history in the Bible shows us again and again how the Lord had to work to save his people from bowing down to statues and taking part in false worship. We also will look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Matthew chapter 4. Starting, yeah, starting with 8, we're going to read 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, magnificence, preeminence, and the excellence of them. And he said to him, These things all taken together, I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. Homage and worship me. Now think That's about, what the devil was talking and telling about Jesus. It. This is what he told Jesus. Correct. If he would do this, he would give him what? All these things of the world. If he would do what? Just bow down and yeah. worship him. And pay homage yeah. and worship him. Let me go to 10. Okay, go And to then 10. Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it has been written. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Sir. All right. See, so if he was telling Jesus to do that, what do you think he's trying to tell us? And what kind of false items you think he's going to put before you to fool you to think that you're worshiping the right God? And mm -hmm. he took Jesus up on the mountain and put all these false items before him right. and offer them to him, what do you think they're going to put before you and fool you to make you think that you will worship the real God? And you know, in Revelation 13, shows us the same thing will be true in the last days. God's people will need to make a choice 
who will they worship? Just like you read in Joshua 24 and 15. And for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua 24 Amen. and 15. That's right. Let's hit 11 now. Joshua 24 and 15. Oh, you talking about read 11? Yeah, we, then we the gonna... devil departed from him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. All right. See what I'm saying? You got to know who you worship in order to tell Satan, get back, Satan. Get back. That's right. You got to know who you worship. You got to know in order to speak to the Satan like that. Then, and then, because he's going to bring it to you. He's going to bring it to you. He's going to bring to you because he has an angel of light. The That's Bible right. says he has an angel of light. He can make you think that he is God. Mm -hmm. He can look like God. He can br bring it to you that he is God. And if you don't know your God for real, he's going to fool you. He's like going to have you. That's correct. That's right. He's going to fool you. Amen. So we're going to stop right there. And we're going to play a song. But we want you to keep it locked in on LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing in Time Bible Study. If I had ten thousand tongues, they would never be enough just to say how much I really love you. Love. And if I had a thousand pages on a mountain, I would stay and lift them high to show how much I love you. Love, I really love you.
to LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing in Time Bible Study. We're talking about America and Babylon. So we're going to go to Daniel chapter 3 and verse 5. Most of you already know this is about the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys. Daniel chapter 3 verse 5 says that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the ducimer, or bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image mm -hmm. that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Now, see, the king of Babylon commanded these three boys to worship the golden image. So we saw that in Revelation 13 uses the same words as Daniel 3 to warn God's people about the attacks against them in the last days. So the story in Daniel chapter 3, if you read the whole chapter, shows us what will happen to God's people in the last days. You know, the king commanded everyone to worship the golden image. And anyone who broke this rule would die in a hot furnace. Ain't that what they tried to do to them? Well, yeah, just like when the Sunday law come in, you're going to go to church on Sunday or that you and I will exactly. be. Exactly. <coughs> we'll be or anybody one. else that or choose not else? to follow the image. The image, that's right. The image of the beast, if you choose not to obey it, whatever it may be, it tells you to do just like we read today about Babel, what city was that they bringing back when they want to pass the law to, uh, uh, for, cap, for, for punishment, capital punishment? Oh, they're talking about to bring the guns. The, the, they're going to use, I forgot what city it the was. Fire, the fire the squad. Fire squad. They want yeah. to bring that back. I think that was in Tennessee. I'm I not think for sure. That, I think it but was. They are, Voting that back in yeah. to bring back in, in fire an squad. Execution. execution, and one of them again is a, a, a fire, fire squad. squad. They're going That's backwards. Scary. 
They're going back. You see, they all they're going back. That old. So why life. would you want to bring put that in place unless? Okay. Unless. Unless. <laughs> you know what's going to use that in you, the end day. Yeah, in the end day. So Think I'm about gonna, it. In the end day. Right. Why are you bringing back capital punishment like that? Why is that? God's people. Revelation oh, chapter 13 tells us like that you. anyone who does not bow down and worship the image of the beast and the animal that comes from the sea will be put to death. And you can look at that in Revelation 13 and verse 15. Yes. So Babylon always has been the city of false worship. The Tower of Babel showed that its builders wanted the same thing Lucifer wanted. They wanted to rise above the tops of the clouds. Let's read Isaiah 14, 14. Okay. Isaiah 14, 14. In Isaiah 14, 14, it said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the right. most high. Mm -hmm. So they also built the tower to save themselves from another worldwide flood. That's the reason that, why they were doing yeah, it. Yeah, and God changed. What are we building? We build buildings so high mm. that you go up on a hundred some floor, two hundred some floor. They're trying to build so high. So what you're trying to build your way up, and okay. that's for uh, prestige. Yeah. And look what I Praise, built. Yeah. Praise, yeah. I mean, the yeah. highest building. I can't remember how high it is. I almost touched the sky. I mean, wow! Check that out. See, that's what we're doing. Prestige, you know. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. So they did not believe God's promise that he would never bring another worldwide flood on the earth. So the new kingdom of Babylon also worshipped the work of human hands. We know that was with King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, yeah. And he yeah. bragged at Babylon, I built this great, beautiful city to show how great and powerful I am. And God told him, sent the wise man to tell him, don't do that no more. And he kept doing it. And he kept doing it. What do we do today? Look what I built. Yes. Look, yeah. Mm -hmm. So later, King Belshazzar took the gold cups from Solomon's temple, and he, I mean, he and his guests drank wine out of them at a feast and praised their gods made from gold, silver, iron, wood, and stone. You can read that. Let's go to Daniel chapter 5 and read okay, that. Okay, Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, 3 and 4. Okay. Then they brought in the gold and silver vessels which had been taken out of the temple, the house of God which was in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Mm. Let's read 5, 2. Immediately and suddenly there appeared the fingers of a man's hand and wrote on the plaster of the wall opposite the candlestick, so exposed especially to the light in the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. So... He took those cups out of the house of God, and then they're going to praise and worship their gods with something that was not even there. And we, we, wow. do, we do the same thing today. We'll take something of God and worship our God. Yes. And with it. Yes. Yes. We're doing yes. it today. We're doing it today. We're doing it today. So the wine made everyone drunk. Then the Persians attacked Babylon. Many people in Babylon died because of he did that. Yes. Some of that. Yes. So we got to be careful. Revelation, we're going to Revelation chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. 7. Revelation chapter 17, oh, 17. verse 5 and 6. 17, 5 and 6. So on her forehead there was inscribed a name of mystery with a secret symbolic meaning. 
Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the filthy and atrocities and abominations of the earth. And I also saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, God's people, and the blood of the martyrs who witnessed for Jesus. And when I saw her, I was utterly amazed and wondered greatly. So let's read also in Jeremiah 51, 6 and 7. Jeremiah chapter 51, 6 and 7. Jeremiah 51, 51 chapter 6 and 7. 6 and 7, okay. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Let every man save his life. Let not destruction come upon you through her punishment for sin and guilt, for it is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render to her a recompense. Mm. Recompense. Yes. Mm. And Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. The nation drank of the wine, therefore the nation have gone mad. Wow. Drink of her wine. That's exactly what's going on. Let's look at um, 53 in that same chapter. Yeah, we should have read number 8 before we went there. Uh, you want to go to 8? Yeah, oh. we number we need, yeah. Babylon has suddenly fallen and is shattered, destroyed. Well for her, if you care to, get bomb for her, in, incurable pain, if you do so, she may possibly be healed. Wow. Possibly. She bad number one. Devil, I'm telling <laughs> she you. She bad woman, I'm telling you. We're going to look in 53, same chapter, 51, 53 now. 51, 53. Well, the verse 53 in chapter 51. Yeah, right. I'm on my way. There we go. Though Babylon shall mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, her lofty stronghold, yet destroy, destroyers will come upon her from me, save the Lord. Mm. Look at 57. And I will make drunk her prince and her wise man, her governors and her commanders, deputies, and her mighty warriors, warriors, and they will sleep a perpetual sleep and not waken, says the king. The Lord of hosts is his name. Wow. Mm. Let's look at Zechariah um, chapter two. I know this this is in this is in the Old Testament talking about Revelation, talking about our end days. This is the Old Testament. Yeah, this, that's this, why we need it. This is the stuff that is happening right now. And that's what's right going to happen. Right now. So we're going to look at Zechariah chapter 2. Okay. Uh, and this is... This is Zechariah chapter 2, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 7 says, Escape to Zion, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Mm. Well. Escape to Zion, mm. you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Let's read verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, after his glory has sent me his messenger to the nations who plunder you, for he who touches you touches the apple or pupil of his eye. Wow. So, and we, you know, when we read all this, what do these verses teach us about Babylon? We can go back in Revelation 17 and 5 and 6 in the New Testament, and we'll tell you, and you can read what they're saying. Revelation chapter 17, 5 and 6. And we just we read that already. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18, 2 and 3. Revelation what? Revelation 18, 18, 2 and 3. 18, 2 and 3, okay. 
And he shouted with a mighty voice, She is falling. Mighty Babylon is falling. She has become a resort and dwelling place for demons mm. and dungeon haunted by every law, low spirit, loathsome spirit, and a bowl for every filthy and detestable bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of her passionate unchastity and the rulers and leaders of the earth have joined with her in committing fornication, idolatry, and the businessmen of the earth have become rich with the wealth of her excessive luxury and wantonness. So, why, why what does that tell you about why, Babylon? Why can't people see these children will come out of this world, come out of this place? Quit drinking, her, drinking of this world. Quit Drinking and taking things of this world, loving this world, loving the things of this world. Let her go. Exactly, because Babylon has a long history. That's right. And the Bible as a city of false worship. So it makes sense that the Bible uses Babylon as a word picture for a religious power who lies about God to people living in the last days. In the last days, that's right. So all three animals are word pictures for kingdoms or governments that rule on the earth. That's right. The wild animal that comes from the sea is a word picture for the old Roman kingdom and the Roman Catholic Church. So now you look at state and church joining together. That's Babylon. That and that becomes out, Babylon. Yeah, that becomes Babylon. Come out of here. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. So the wild animal that comes from the ground is a word picture that shows us that the dragon, the wild animal that comes from the sea, and the wild animal that comes from the ground will become a team. These three powers of God's enemy, and yeah. they will join and work together as one power. One power, as one great power. One great power. Against God's people. Exactly. Against God's people. So, Revelation 17, 7. Let's look at Revelation 17, and verse 7. All right. But the angel said to me, Why do you wonder? I will explain to you the secret symbolic meaning of the mystery of the woman as well as of the beast having the seven heads and the ten horns that carries her. So in Revelation 17 also shows us a woman who rides on the back of a red wild animal. The woman on the back of the red wild animal also is a word picture. The Bible uses it to show an unlawful marriage between government and religion in the last days. In the last days. So this woman on the back of the red wild animal is very different from the holy woman or church in Revelation 12. So Babylon is the mother of all women who sell the use of of their bodies in Revelation 17 and verse 5. Let's read Revelation 17 and verse 5. We're in 17 now. And on her forehead there was inscribed a name of mystery with a secret symbolic meaning. Babylon the great, the mother, like we said, of prostitutes and the filth and atrocities and abomination of the earth. We yeah. read that. Yeah, we read that. So Babylon, like we're saying, is the mother of all women. Another name for a woman who sells sex for for money is a prostitute. So as a mother prostitute, Babylon has been busy making children. So what does that mean? That's right. Mm -hmm. It means that the false mother church has given birth to many daughters. There you go, to men. False churches. False churches. So that's what's on this That's earth. her daughters. That's her daughters. So, so the mother church has many so daughters. So who, who is the mother church? 
The Catholic the Church, Church is a mother Catholic. church. Because it's, it, it's, right. it's a religious, it's a power. Yeah, it's, it's a, a religious power. power. That's what you're talking about. It's a power. The Catholic Church is a mother church of all. So she's been given what? False power. religion. She's been to given me. power. Right? False religion. That. So when you start studying and reading and allowing the Holy Spirit to help you understand the symbolic language then in Daniel go. and Revelation, then it helps you understand, that oh, right. it's a oh. system. Right, it's a system that set up Mother Church, the Hall of Mormon. That's who it is, the Mother That's Church. That's right. Yeah, they selling false religion. False religion, false churches. False churches. So there it is. That's why he, he compared her with this one right here. Exactly. So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 18, yeah, Revelation. verse 1 through 4. Okay, 18, 1 through 4. Then I saw another angel descending from heaven, possessing great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his radiance and splendor, and he shouted, with a mighty voice, she has fallen, mighty Babylon has fallen, she has become a resort and dwelling place for demons and dungeon haunted by every loathsome spirit, loathsome spirit, and a bowl for every filthy and detestable bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of her passionate unchastity, and the rulers and leaders of the earth have joined with her committing fornication, idolatry, and the businessmen of the earth have become rich with the wealth of her excessive luxury and wantonness. And then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, said it, so that you may not share in her sins, neither participate in her plagues. So Revelation warns us that Babylon will fall away from the truth, or fall into lies and false teachings will, in the end, lead to Satan's final attack on God's law. Right. So yeah. after Babylon falls from the truth, yeah. a law will be made that causes everyone who is not loyal to God to accept the beast, wild animal, Mark, the special proof of his power. You know, we read Revelation yeah. 14, 9 through 11. See, the Wait. strong warning, go ahead. Now, what you say? A law will be made. A law will be a made. A law. What law is getting ready to be passed? Sunday law. A Sunday law. A law will be made. So that, the strong warning, you know, in Revelation 14, 8, will be given again in the future. Mm -hmm. The people on the earth will be warned again, again. to separate themselves Self. from Babylon oh. and, and her false teaching. teaching. That's right. So God will invite the people in Babylon who are loyal to him to leave Babylon That's and right. join his true last uh, day church. His true last day church. That law will be made and his people will be warned once again to get out of that. That's right. To get out. Let's read that down. So in Revelation 13, 7, 13, Revelation 13, 7. 13, 7. Mm -hmm. Okay, 7, let me go 13. He was further permitted to wage war on God's holy people, the saints, and to over overcome them. And power was given him to extend his authority over every tribe, people, tongue, and nation. So... The verse paints a very dark, hopeless picture about life on this earth. These verses show us the awful power that false religion teachings have on people's mind and in their lives. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, these verses also give us hope. They tell us about another angel from heaven, and these angels bring to the whole earth the light of God's glory. So also, God's people are told to separate themselves from false religion in Babylon. So what does that command tell us about the work we must do? We got to continue to witness. We got to continue to witness, that's right. We got to continue to witness. We don't want that mark. That mark, that's right. We don't want that mark. We, we must don't... be clear that's to right. say that no one has the beast mark right now which is the number of his name. We don't want that. 
So the Lord is telling us now to come out of Babylon. Come out so of Babylon. So we won't drink of the wine of the cup of yes. the undiluted cup of God's indignation. There you go. There you go. So what we got to do as God's people is to study. Study as the Holy Spirit to show you. A lot of people say they don't read Revelation because they don't like the beast. Then well, they don't others, understand it. But it's symbolic. And you just heard us say in there what they are. Yeah. It's, it's, well, Reve it, Revelation, it's a system. It's a system. Revelation explains itself. It tells you what the beasts are. It tells you the meaning. And the, these people won't take time to, to read it and ask God to lead them through that. And it helps you to understand, oh, I see it's a, it's a system of religious and political power. Yeah, now, if you look at religious and political, look at what political is doing now. It's horrible. Yes. They're already messing things up, and it's a mess. If you haven't seen what politics is doing, you need to go back and look. Yeah, you need to take a second look. Yeah. So we just want to thank you for joining us right here on LPJ. We're going to play a song, come back with closing comment and prayer and our email address. So keep it locked in on LPJ64 with End Time Bible Studies. my direction you're the compass for my way you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all your hand is there to hold, hold. Jesus, you're the center.
Jesus is the center of my joy. If he's not the center of your joy, you should make sure he is. Well, I'll tell you that's what. That's the it, only way you're going to make it. If he, he's not the center of your joy, you don't have no joy. Uh, you said so that I, right. I just want to tell you Jesus, like Jesus, others, and you. That's right. And you, you go, don't have, have no joy. You Amen. don't have no joy if he's not the center. Amen. So our closing comment tonight is saying he will try to get some humans to throw out all of God's law. He will even try to get other people to throw out part of God's law. Either way, there's no difference between these two things in the end. Why? Because the Bible says that a person who is guilty of breaking only one part of God's law is guilty of breaking the whole law. And that's in James chapter 2 and verse 10. Remember that. You break all of it. You and break, break one. One, you, broke, you them broke them all. So don't think you break a little piece. You know, that's all you oh, broke. You break one it. commandment. Oh, ain't no big deal. That's right. It's not like breaking a glass. You break a piece out. And uh, you still got most of the glass. Well, think about it. If you break a piece of the glass, you might as well throw it all out. Yeah. Because it ain't no good it to drink no out good. of. Right. So, if you break one, you broke them all. That's right. So, remember, it's going to be all about worship. So, we trust God, worship Him only. 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 Remember what... Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my nice. house, we mm. will serve the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. So now we got prayer. A mind to pray. Dear Almighty and Omnipotent God, our Father, our Creator, and everlasting help, we humbly approach your throne in the precious name of Jesus. We eagerly enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, recognizing you are infinite in power and might. The fullness of your ways are past knowing, and your majesty is both seen and felt. Your word says you will grant us the very desire and will to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus, the first and the last, we ask for our mind to pray and revelation to have a deeper and more intimate fellowship with you. We ask that you drive out all distractions and the cares of this life and give us a sincere heart to seek your face with great expectation and hope. Let us have the same attitude of Christ, who was totally faithful and dependent on you. In the name of Jesus, help us, Holy Spirit, to submit our minds to the purpose and plans of God while teaching us how to follow him daily. Let us turn from our wicked ways so that our sins be forgiven and that you hear our prayers and restore our land. In the name of Jesus, renew our minds and saturate them in your word that our thoughts are pure and steadfastly focused on you. Draw us near and let us listen attentively to your voice, cherishing every moment in prayer and fellowship with you. Let us desire your presence more than our natural food and give us a mind to pray and seek your kingdom above all else while trusting you to provide all of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 And may the windows of heaven open and pour upon you 
a bundle of blessings. We just want to thank you again for joining us, and you can always check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Buzzsprout, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and more. Just keep searching, and you will find it. But we thank you again for joining us, and may God continue to bless you. And remember, we come on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 p.m., to 10 p.m. and if you have Bible questions or you need prayer, you can email us at r o b t g i n a 50 at gmail dot com and have a wonderful and blessed Sabbath. Be blessed. Good night.